going on guys? It's time for another reaction video and today I'm going to be reacting to Australia states and territories explained from Geography Now. Uh, Australia has long been one of the places on my bucket list probably for at least 20 plus years now and, and uh, you would think in 20 years time I would have found the time to visit Australia. Um, but given that it's so far and it's an expensive trip and if I'm going to make a trip that far I want to go for more than like a week you know I want to go for more of an extended stay and that just hasn't been in the cards yet so but uh, hopefully one day I'm gonna be able to make that happen and get down to Australia and check it out but until then I'm gonna check it out through uh, some YouTube videos and see what I can learn about Australia so let's get into this Hey everybody, so this is going to be a special extra bonus video for you. Heavily requested the states and territories of Australia. Before we start though, as you guys know, I'm saving up money to buy flight tickets to visit you guys for the next geographies. We got some great submissions from you guys on four continents. There was a guy from Somaliland, Kazakhstan, a girl from Italy. So obviously one way that I make money is to do sponsored videos. As you guys know, I'm kind of selective with the brands that I choose to work with. No more video games. Now I only work with education and geography based brands and I'm happy to announce you probably heard of them the good people at skillshare have reached out and decided to sponsor this video skillshare is a website where you can learn skills pretty simple there are over 25,000 classes you can take in all fields of expertise and academia and my personal favorite segment if you click on the lifestyle tab they have a languages segment where you can sign up for classes in German Spanish Korean even this guy teaches Finnish stuff like that it's all there on the website great for people who just want to either learn a new skill or just quench their curiosity or further their careers less than ten dollars a month premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes and the first people to sign up with the link in in the description of this video will get a free two month trial at the end of the day skillshare sharing skills teaching the world great stuff thank you skillshare for reaching out and helping out geography now really appreciate it you guys rock if you guys uh have any interest in skillshare go check out his video and click on that link one thing as a uh, reaction creator is um i want to try to always give back to the creators that i'm using their videos so um easiest way for me to do that is to pass on his skillshare uh, ad so you guys go check out his video and also go check out his channel and subscribe if you end up liking this video all right so finally let's talk australia i love aussies they're like one of the only few people in the world that can out crazy americans now we kind of already explained this in the australia video but let's just kind of recap australia is basically divided into six states and ten federal territories three of which are internal and seven of which are external outlying island territories so i talked to a lot of you guys the aussie subscribers you helped me write this script and gave me information so i'm gonna kind of just report back what a lot of you guys said and add my research so here we go new New South Wales, capital Sydney. This is the most populous state at about 7 million. A little less than a third of all Australians live in this one state. And the capital, Sydney, alone holds about two thirds of the entire state's population. Basically, even though this was not the first place that was discovered in Australia by Europeans, it's kind of like the first place where the British started colonizing. You know this place, it has all the touristy spots. It's super diverse. You'll find a lot of Greeks and Asians and Maltese, even, and South Africans. Oh, and don't forget Lord High. How island belongs to them. In the south, it's also home to the highest peak on the mainland, Kosciuszko, and it's also the source of the longest river in the country, the Murray. Uh, according to geography Brad, New South Welshmen love to gamble, and it's kind of like a problem. Like half of all the bars and clubs have slot machines. In general, New South Wales is kind of like the core nucleus business hub. It's like the uppity metropolitan part of Australia. Also, uh, Hugh Jackman and ACDC are from here. Queen I knew Hugh Jackman. I had no clue, though, about ACDC being from Australia. I, had, I always thought they were an American band. I had no clue at all. Queensland, capital Brisbane. Uh, I was told sometimes the people here are called banana benders because it's like home of Australia's banana industry. This Dutch dude landed in Cape York somewhere, you know, that horn of Australia. Uh, according to Geography Max, it's where the rainforest meets the reef. And it's basically like the playground of Australia, kind of like the Florida, Orlando, you know. They got amazing beaches, they got the world famous Great Barrier Reef, great snorkeling. Just be careful though, because on some of the beaches, you can find box jellyfish, which could kill you in minutes. On top of that, they got a ton of theme parks, and uh, it even has the tallest building in all of Australia and the Southern Hemisphere, Q1. Southern Australia, the festival state. Capital Adelaide. Uh, a lot of you guys said this. It's kind of famous for being that place where the guy murdered people and hid body parts in barrels. And the people here eat crows, which is why their AFL team is the crows. I didn't know people ate crows, but I guess people eat doves. 
in the US and crow is probably bigger than a dove. So I wonder if the meat is similar. I don't know if anybody's eaten crow. Tell me what's it taste like? Is it like eating chicken or does it have, is it more gamey like eating duck? That's what you guys said. I don't. Okay. No, but seriously, Adelaide is sometimes called Radelaide. It was voted one of the safest and livable cities in not only just Australia, but the world. Apparently, I was told the best wine also comes from South Australia, mostly grown in the Barossa and Clare Valley. It's also known for having like all those salt flats and dry lake beds. Mining is huge out. Salt flats are always cool. I, I, I don't. There's a lot of them here um, in, in uh, North and South America. Uh, but I've yet to visit any of them, but hopefully one of these days I get to visit a salt flat somewhere because I want to do photo shoots there. I have a lot of ideas uh, rolling around in my head specifically for photo shoots. And it would just be amazing to see it in person. Out here, especially in Opal. And speaking of which, it's also home to Cooper Petty, the underground city. Cool. Ta that looks pretty cool. Bull. And speaking of which, it's also home to Cooper Petty. That's awesome. There's a place in... I think it's Arizona or New Mexico. I can't remember uh, if you watch the travel YouTubers, Kara and Nate, um, they stayed in the underground hotel uh, and it's basically like a gigantic cave, um, sort of similar to this. This one looks a little bit more well-finished. The other one is a little bit more rustic and then they kind of threw some stuff in the center to make it livable for a night. Um, but yeah, it would be cool to check that out. Petty, the underground city. Cool. Tasmania, colloquially known as Tassie, capital Hobart. This is the only island state out of all the states, and it's made up of like one big island and like 300 smaller islands. I was told Tasmania is kind of like the butt of all the jokes for Australians. They kind of treat it as if it's like the West Virginia of Australia. <laughs> According to Geography Kelly, the people are basically apple-eating bogans and two-headed mutants. The word bogan meaning something like hillbillies. Nah, but that's the joke, but in all <laughs> seriousness. Tasmania is actually a very beautiful place. It's known for its very unique flora and fauna. Of course, you guys all know that they're famous for having the Tasmanian devil, the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world. It used to be the Tasmanian tiger, but they went extinct in the third. Wow. I never, I, I didn't know about the Tasmanian tiger either. I mean, obviously everybody knows about Tasmanian devil because of Looney Tunes and the popularization of it through that, but I didn't know about the Tasmanian tiger. It looks wild. It almost looks like a, like a cross between like a hyena and a cat. 30s, sad. I was told they're really nice people though, and apparently they make really good cheese and whiskey. Well, I'm down for that. Victoria, the Garden State, capital Melbourne, not Melbourne. It is the second most populous state after New South Wales, and it is the most densely populated state. It was famous for a gold rush in the 1850s, and it was also famous for the Eureka Stockade. It was like the only armed conflict and fight against the British during colonial times. The biggest thing you guys told me is that this is kind of like the arch nemesis of New South Wales. These people fight with New South Wales on like everything. Cricket, AFL, rugby, even dancing like they invented the Melbourne Shuffle. Even architecture. <laughs> to this day, Melbourne actually has more skyscrapers than Sydney and they hold the second, third, fourth, and fifth tallest buildings in the country. It's like they didn't even want to give Sydney a chance. Uh, basically in the capital Melbourne, there's like two different types of people. There's like the hardcore sports fanatics, or the hipsters. They have a huge cafe culture and like artsy scene with like live music. Otherwise, they also have uh, the 12 Apostles, Phillip Island where you can see penguins. But yeah, basically you get kind of like this artsy coffee drinking but highly competitive state in Australia. Western Australia, capital Perth. It is the largest state area wise. It basically just takes up the entire Western third of Australia. And it's actually the second largest country subdivision in the world after the Saha Republic in Russia. About 92% of the population lives just in this little southwest corner where the green vegetation is and out of that group about 79 percent of whom live in the perth metropolitan area they are the second largest iron ore producer in the world about 46 percent of all australian exports actually come from this state alone geography keith not our keith a different keith said uh the people here are cashed up bogans it's kind of like those you know rich texan oil prospectors you know it was also the site of the famous i'm gonna start using that term bogans and uh, see if I can get anybody to start picking up on that here in the States because uh, I've never heard of it before, but it, the fact that it kind of uh, uh, is similar to, to hillbillies here is just kind of comical, uh, comical term. And actually one of my buddies said I'm going to see you tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it with him and see if he asks what I'm talking about. <laughs>
Egypt. It's kind of like those, you know, rich Texan oil prospectors, you know. It was also the site of the famous Emu War, where Australians fought against emus and lost. And also home to famous bubble gum. Is that for real? Like they really, was there an overpopulation of emus or something and they, they had to go to war with them? Or is this some sort of a joke? Tell me in the comments if you know what he's talking about. Or where Australians fought against emus and lost. And also home to famous bubblegum pink Lake Hillier. It's also home to the Kimberley region, one of the most geologically fascinating regions in all of Australia. I've seen the pink uh, lake before in some other videos, um, but this looks really cool. This looks like you're on another planet right here. Yeah, Rottnest Island, where you can see those quokkas, <laughs> the smiling animal. And uh, yeah, just really underrated. I say check it out. Why not? And now we reach the territories. The Australian Capital Territory, otherwise known as ACT, capital of this territory and the entire country, Canberra. I will never forgive myself for getting it totally wrong in the Australia video. It was so embarrassing. But hey, I'm redeeming myself right now. Canberra. In a nutshell, Canberra was built because it was kind of like the middle point between Melbourne and Sydney so that neither could be the capital. And they were just like, let's find the neutral ground, even though geographically it's a little closer to Sydney. The territory is small, only encompassing about 2,300 square kilometers. It's basically where you see all the government buildings, the parliament building, which actually looks pretty cool. A lot. I like a lot of the architecture, man. I, I know that the uh, uh, symphony, oh God, he showed it earlier, is, is like a very trademark place that everybody knows about. Um, but this this looked really cool too. It's basically where you see all the government buildings, the parliament building, which actually looks pretty cool. A lot of you guys said the same thing for some reason. It is known for having lots of roundabouts, people who can't build front fences on their property, legal fireworks, and legal pornography. I, I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, that a lot of you guys wrote that, so I guess I just have to report what you said. I mean, they also have a zoo, aquarium, the National Gallery is here with a lot of cool indigenous aboriginal art. For some reason, they cool. have a glassworks shop and you can like hunt for truffles with dogs. Okay, sure. Jervis or Jarvis Bay Territory. Many people don't even really see this as like a separate territory because it's kind of like it works with the capital. As the story goes, after Canberra was built, they were kind of like, oh crap, maybe we should have done this on the coast so that we could have access to the ocean. So in 1915, New South Wales was like, okay, you can have this little peninsula. So then they took it, but then it kind of sucked because the port didn't really function that well. And like the train leading up to it couldn't hold heavy freight cargo going up the hill. And now it's just home to like a Navy base with like 400 people. So it actually cooperates with the capital legislatively, but it actually is its own separate territory. I mean, it's super small, but you can still actually do some things here. Like there's uh, whale watching, there's some shops and restaurants. But yeah, that's just about it. Small little territory. The Northern Territory, capital Darwin. Now this is basically the place that Australians are referring to when they say the outback. It is the gateway to all that interior crazy Australian stuff that you see in all the movies and TV shows and magazines. Obviously it's home to the most famous natural landmark Uluru or Ayers Rock. There's a lot of other cool natural sites too like the Maduranka Thermal Pools. And even though it doesn't have the highest population of indigenous Australians, it has the highest population per capita. Somewhere around 10%. And now the external offshore island territories. Ashmore and Cartier. It's basically a bunch of empty sandbanks and sand islands and coral reefs in the middle of the ocean. In 1974, Australia signed the Memorandum of Understanding. It kind of allows Indonesian fishers to go around the area and fish and go to the islands for shelter and visit grave sites. It is a marine park. However, it also kind of acts, unfortunately, as like a place for human smuggling. And the government has mm. been kind of monitoring this area for a while. The Australian Antarctic Territory. I mean, technically no capital, but the only place of residency would be Davis Station. And it's actually the largest territorial claim on Antarctica by any nation. Uh, and yeah, basically, you know, uh, research and scientists. Uh, there was some controversy with some illegal Japanese whaling ships that passed by the area. I mean, what else can I say? I mean, it's, it's Antarctica. You know, you know what it is. Christmas Island, capital Flying Fish Cove. I actually did a video on this a while ago. Check it out if you want. It's a fascinating island. There's only about 2,000 people, but it's very diverse. Every year, the island experiences a huge crab. I knew I'd heard of Christmas Island and I couldn't think of why, but it's because of these crabs. I remember this. Only about 2,000 people, but it's very diverse. Every year, the island experiences a huge crab migration. They even built barricades and like a bridge <laughs> that they can use so that they don't get crushed by cars. They are also no. It's interesting when they can create something like that, and Mother Nature and uh, wildlife can understand that it's there for them and and uh, and migrate towards it and use it to navigate over the roads. I'm sure there's still some of them that go over the roads, but I wonder if there's like a curb that blocks it. Yeah, it kind of corrals them in. It makes them go to it, it looks like. 
interesting engineering for interesting uh, problems. Even built barricades and like a bridge that they can use so that they don't get crushed by cars. They are also known for having a former detention center that held asylum seekers. But yeah, it's a pretty cool place off the beaten track. The Cocos or Keeling Island, capital West Island. They also go by Pulu Panjang. Cocos referring to all the coconut trees that can be found on the island and Keeling because it was named after the guy that discovered it. It's made up of 27 coral atolls, only two of which are inhabited. Altogether, there are only about 600 people, mostly Malays. They are descended from the workers that were brought over by this Scottish guy who decided to kind of, he was a merchant, he wanted to develop the islands to, for a plantation. The Coral Sea Islands. There is no capital, but the only inhabited island is Willis Island. It only has like four people on a weather station. Their job is to like monitor the weather. Other than that though, the only other thing known about this place is that in 2004, there was like a bunch of protesters that tried to make their own micro nation. It was called the Gay and Lesbian Kingdom of the Coral Sea Islands. Even though it wasn't really much of a serious claim and it was just more of like a political statement, it actually gained a lot of publicity. The Heard and McDonald Islands. Completely uninhabited, but Atlas Cove is kind of like the place where people go to camp out and research. Most Aussies learn that this is the only place in Australia where they have active volcanoes. It's actually closer to Africa and Antarctica than it is to Australia. Freezing wow. cold, peaks covered in ice most of the year, and actually Mawson Peak on Heard Island is technically the tallest point in Australia, if you consider it, but yeah. And speaking of which, Mawson Peak on Heard Island actually creates this weird vortex shedding effect on the clouds when they pass by. But otherwise, yeah, the only living things on the island would be seals and penguins. You actually need permission from the Australian government to even come here because it's a nature reserve. It would be a real challenge to come here, but really cool to document it, don't you think? And finally, Norfolk Island, capital Kingston. This- I like that flag, it's, it's very unique. All, I, I like that it's just two colors and then uh, the, just the, the, the simplicity of a tree. I like it. One is interesting. First of all, they are famous for the Norfolk pine, which grows here. Go. It's even on their flag. They export it a lot, especially to mainland Australia for Christmas time. Second, just like many other places in Australia, it started as a penal colony. Then it was closed down and abandoned. And then the extra mutineers from Pitcairn Island came over and resettled it. There was like 200 of them. So there's kind of like a link between Norfolk and Pitcairn. Amongst mm. that crew were some Polynesians. They mixed in and today there's kind of like a weird fusion British slash Polynesian culture. Culture. They even speak their own Creole. And yeah, basically the people on the island today are mostly descended from those mutineers. So that's it. That's all 16 states and territories. However, I do kind of have to mention one more thing. This is probably going to offend some people, but it kind of has to be said. Australia kind of still, in a way, thinks... New Zealand is like still theirs. According to section six of the Australia's Constitution Act, it says the states shall mean such of the colonies of New South Wales, New Zealand, Queensland, Tasmania, Victoria, Western Australia, and South Australia. And they just kind of left it there. But when Kiwis see this, they're like, ha, nope. Good luck, you're on your own. In the end, Australia is pretty much unlike anywhere else on Earth. I mean, can you imagine what the first European colonists must have thought when they landed on this area? They must have thought it was like a completely different planet. Like what, like hopping pouch animals and like duck-billed beaver things? It really is unique, landscape-wise and people-wise. Beautiful people, great culture. Thank you for watching this video. I had fun making it. Stay cool, stay tuned. Great video, man. I really enjoyed that. Learned a lot uh, uh, about the territories, obviously. That's what the, the uh, whole video was about but um yeah just a lot of things i didn't know at all in general so i'm going to continue doing more australia videos if you guys have some suggestions on some i should check out let me know and also just want to give a quick shout out if just by chance uh any of these uh, australian youtubers that i watch on the regular happen to see this video um ybs young bloods with brody uh max and aki um hayden peterson seventh era and North Borders. Uh, I enjoy y'all's content a lot and uh, watch it on the regular, man. So uh, yeah, shout out to some Aussie YouTubers. And uh, if you're new here and you like this video, please subscribe, click the bell so you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.